In the last few videos, I focused heavily on the force example of fields. Now let me return to the idea of fluid flow. Consider a field that describes the flow of water or air currents. If I have a net or other porous object in the field, then unless the flow is perfectly across the edge of the object, some amount of the medium will be flowing through the net. Is there a way to measure, measure such a thing? This seems like a difficult project. The net can have a complicated geometry. At different points on the net, the interaction with the fluid can vary. It might be flowing through one part of the net in one, di in one direction and in the opposite direction through another part. But I'd like to have a way to put this all together in some, into some kind of collective sense of the flow through the net. And I'm going to look back at line integrals for motivation here. For line integrals, I looked at the interaction of a parametric curve in a field. To do that, I needed the tangent to the curve so that I could take the dot product to measure the interaction. And the tangent came from parameterization. So I'm going to need to, to do something similar to describe the net. I need a two-dimensional analog of a parametric curve. Such a thing is called a parametric surface. And in this video, I'll be defining parametric surfaces and giving some examples. So let D be a simply connected set in R2, and let sigma be a continuous function from D to R3. This could be any Rn if I want, but in this course, I'm only really interested in three-dimensional situations, so let's stick to R3. So this is a function of two inputs and three outputs. I'll call the inputs u and v, and the outputs sigma 1, sigma 2, and sigma 3. This is a parametric surface. The inputs are the parameters, just like t was for the parametric curve, but there are now two of them. So the output is going to be two-dimensional instead of one-dimensional. There are two independent directions of movement on the surface determined by these parameters u and v. This is the formal definition, but let me get straight into examples to demonstrate what this looks like. Early in the, earlier in the course, I talked about scalar fields and their graphs. The graph of a scalar field of two variables is a surface in R3, and I talked about how the tangent planes to these surface are defined a few weeks ago. How can this be considered a parametric surface? Well, pretty easily. The points in the graph are x, y, and z equals f of x, y. Therefore, I could let x and y be the parameter and the z coordinate determined by the graph. In terms of u and v, this is the function sigma of uv equals u, v, and the function applied to uv in the third coordinate. Any graph of a two-variable scalar field is a parametric surface in R3. A very common construction for parametric surfaces is a surface of revolution. Here I take a single variable function y equals f of x and draw its graph. Then I spin the graph around the x-axis to create a surface. The parametric description of this is sigma with parameters x and theta, and this is equal x, f of x cos theta, f of x sine theta. I use x and theta instead of u and v to remind me that one of these is an angle. u and v are the usual parameters, but I certainly can use other variable names if I wish. Anything that has a circular symmetry around an axis will probably be described nicely with this technique. Cylinders, cones, and anything that looks like it might have been made on a lathe. I can copy the construction of spherical coordinates also to make a parametric surface. These three equations are the coordinate equations for spherical coordinates. R is the radius, phi is the colatitude, theta is the longitude, these are taken directly from a few weeks ago. For a parametric surface, I want a fixed sphere, so I'm going to make r constant. Then the two angles are the parameters, and I can identify any point on the sphere by the two angles. So this is a parametric surface. And like I did with the sphere, I can do with a cylinder based on cylindrical coordinates from a few weeks ago. So here are cylindrical coordinates, and I again let r be constant to be on a fixed cylinder, and I let the angle and the height, theta and z, be the parameters. The result is a parametric description of a cylinder of height h and of radius r around the z-axis. The height h is given by the bounds in z from 0 to h. Finally, let me give a parametric description of a cone. 
The setup is the same as the cylinder with height and angle. However, instead of a constant radius, I now make the radius linear in the height. R constant gets replaced with R times H minus Z over H, where H is the height of the cone. So instead of a cylinder, this is a parametric description of the cone. These examples will cover most of the surfaces we'll use, with a few others to be introduced as we go along. In general, description of parametric surfaces is a pretty difficult problem. Constructing a parametric description of a complicated shape requires a lot of creativity and a lot of technique. But if I stick to a few common shapes, those that I've defined here, I can mostly avoid the difficulty of the problem. We're going to need parametric surfaces in this section of the course, but this is not a course in constructive geometry. So we're mostly going to use what we need and move on. And these examples will cover most of what you're going to need about actually constructing parametric surfaces.